But uh, we're going to look in Isaiah. We're going to start in the, the 42nd chapter, around verse 22, and move on down through 43. But i got to go talk to God a minute. So, Lord, I just come to you. Lord, you know, sometimes I just want to shrink from this situation. It's too much for a man, and, and it's good that it is too much for a man, because it takes a God to do it. And so I just lean upon the Holy Ghost tonight, and I just ask that your word would go forth in power, God, and that it would go out and do exactly what you have ordained it to do, God, that it would bear fruit for the kingdom of God. Lord, that, that you would get glory and praise. We tell you tonight, God, we love you and we need you, Lord. And so I just pray your word would go forth, God. <clears throat> Have your way with us. Have your way with me, God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Guys, come over and pray with me. It was neat. Uh, when I lifted my head, I saw the exit sign. <laughs> But uh, not that I wanted to run or anything of that nature, but I thought about Leonard Ravenhill, and he said that, that hell had a thousand entrances, but no exits. And that's true. It's a wide path, and many are on that path today. But let's enter into the word in verse 22 in the 42nd chapter. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey, and none delivereth for a spoiled, and none saith restored. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? Did not the Lord? He against whom we have sinned, for they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. Therefore he had poured upon him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle, and it had set him on fire round about. Yet he knew not, and it burned him, yet he laid it not to heart. And here we're going to get on down to where I wanted to get tonight. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. And I want to stop and, and let people know, and I don't want to be critical, I don't want to be hard, that's not my motive, but the, this Bible that's full of precious promises for the people of God yes. is for the people of God, it's for the children. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so if you're a lost person and you try to take this book and use it, you're probably just going to get yourself in a whole lot more trouble. And I know that sounds difficult, mm -hmm. but that's the truth. Mm -hmm. I, so I don't want to send out some false message of hope in that way. I want you to know that God deals with His children in a very special way. Did you see there that he created thee, he formed thee, he redeemed thee, and he says thou art mine. And there's no greater, no greater thing that I can think of is to be one of God's. Mm. Bought by Jesus Christ. We're not our own. And I think about salvation and how he come and found me in my grandma's sewing room. In, in, in the night of nights, at my lowest low, when my world was crumbling and crashing down, and sin was heavy upon me, it had worked in me. And I had seen it work. But God brought it up to the forefront and let me see it. And he said, look, you are rich. You are miserable. You're in a state, man. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, Lord, I, I am, but I don't want that no longer. And I cried out, and God saved my soul okay. in that sewing room. And I, I, it's kind of neat. I, I think of my grandma back there sewing, 
and if she would sing and, and uh, hum hymnals. And, and as she worked with her needle and thread, and I just know that God did a work in me with his needle and thread. Because <laughs> I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for him. Romans 15, 4. Because you, you might say, well, why are you over here in the Old Testament? We're in the New Testament. And that's true. But the Old Testament is for our teaching. Romans 15, 4, it says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. So we can glean a lot from getting over here in the Old Testament and seeing how God dealt with His people. If God's not dealing with you, I, I believe that the, there's a great danger in that. And that's where I think that I'm getting at tonight. There's an urgency mm -hmm. in, in my heart. There's an urgency, not in just mine, but the ministers of God to just preach the gospel, the old-time gospel that will set men and women free. I don't think you've got to get real fancy about it. I just believe you put the Word of God out there and you trust God and you let God be God. Mm -hmm. God will do it. Hallelujah. You know, we, we want to we want to get a hold of something. We want to touch something. And you remember that old boy that wanted to help God out and steady the ark? He killed him. You know, you remember that? But this chapter forty three, this verse two, this is promises for God's people. It says, "When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee." And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Mm. And the reason why is for I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Syria for thee, since thou wast precious in my sight. And so tonight, I believe that there's people going through things. I believe people carry things in here. I think I carried some things in here. And have you ever been in any deep water? <laughs> so deep that you get out of yourself and get into God. You see, that's what God's looking for. People that will abandon themselves and get into Him and believe Him and walk in Him. I don't know, this is taking a different turn, but I'm thinking about <clears throat> some of y'all know the testimony with Emory and us. And, uh, I'm not clear on all the days, but she was born with a brain tumor. Two months old, they found it in Mount Pleasant. They got her and her mom on an airplane and flew them to Children's Medical over in Dallas. And there we went through some deep water. Mm -hmm. The two month baby. Best thing to ever come out of me. Precious. Just surrendered to the ministry. Didn't even know what I was doing. Still don't. But God knows what He's doing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and man, they took us in that office where that old brain surgeon was. And I'd never seen so many books. And he had computers all scattered out. And his books were all messy and but I got peace in that. I said, look, this is a working man. This, this ain't just some fly by the night doctor here. He's entering in. He's got his books out. He's got his computer open. And we didn't know it at the time that he was one of the number one doctors in America. And they told us that she'd be blind. And they told us a lot of things that was very negative.
You know, people will speak death to you. So you need to hear what God has to say. And so it took me getting before my father to get a word that I could stand on. My earthly dad was there. My earthly mother was there. My family was there. And as much as they tried to minister to me, they couldn't. My dad said, son, it'll be all right. And I could look right to him and tell he was lying. He was more fearful than I was. <clears throat> I don't think how God changed his life. Mm -hmm. He gave me this word. And uh, they had given us a name packed. I see you ring. And I wrote it on there where everyone could see it, but where I could keep it close to my heart. And the word that God gave me in that storm, in that deep water, was Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And so I laid hold of that verse. My pastor at the time come, and he told me, Tommy, I love you, I love you and your family. But God's going to have to minister to you in these days. And he was right. And man, I'd go off into that little prayer chapel over there in that hospital with all them sick kids. And I began to read the old hymnals. And I would find encouragement. And I'd read that old hymn about his eyes on the sparrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, I said, well, my God, your eyes on the sparrow. Mm -hmm. And how much greater is your eye on me and my daughter? Mm -hmm. And I started talking to God like that. Mm -hmm. And I, I said, hey, hey, I'm your seed, God. You, you, you bought me with your precious blood. I belong to you. And so she's my seed, which is your seed. And I just started talking to him like that. Mm -hmm. And so God was doing a, a work in my heart and with other people around us. And I'm telling you, that was a testing time. I know Paul and Stephanie, they spent some time at the hospital too. But, but we always would see someone in a worse shape than we were. I seen people that come in there and they say, would you pray with them? And I'd pray with them and I would try to minister to them the best I could. Man, there was one guy, he he come and he said, Brother Tommy, he said, I've got to unplug my daughter today. Wow. <clears throat> now what are you going to say to that? <laughs> I didn't have to say that. I just sat there and listened. Because I wanted to share it, but I didn't have nothing to that was that deep to share with him at that point in his life. And he said, but it's all right. God has made a way. I know that she'll go to a better place. And he said, just pray for me and pray for the family. I'm fixing to go tell them. And I seen him walk over there and tell them. It's something to see things like that changes you. It humbles you. And the neat thing about that is we were staying in the Ronald McDonald house and they had a little prayer room and a, a little prayer journal. And the grandmother of the child that was unplugged was staying there and she wrote a prayer in there. And man, it, it, it tore me up to read that mm -hmm. because she wrote in there Oh, God, I'm already missing her smell. Mm. Just stuff we take for granted, you know. And, and she was a little, you know, 
I wanted to be your cheerleader. <laughs> Just writing stuff like that. But I know I got off on this, but uh, that's deep water. Mm -hmm. the deep water. Anyone in deep water tonight? I was going to look at the examples in the scripture. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. In Exodus 14. story. This is about the Red Sea. But I want you just to see what God will do. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses and his chariots and his horsemen. And the, to make that story shorter, God closes that sea up on the enemies of God. And he gets glory. And he puts his name out there because of God. And he said, look what I'll do for my people. And look what I'll do with the wicked. And so that's why I think my heart's heavy for the lost. I know where the lost are headed if they don't cry out to Jesus. You can't take the applications of this book if you're lost. Remember the promises are for his children. So the emphasis is you must be born again. And when you become born again, then your eyes are open and your ears are open. And then you can understand the things of the Word of God. But until that day happens, it's just foolishness. And that's what God calls the preacher, a fool for Christ. But he said he uses the foolishness of preaching to save some. To save some. And it's worth all that to save some. Y'all know about the fire. I know everyone in here knows about Daniel, right? Daniel 3, 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said, to the king of Nebuchadnezzar. We are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And if he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. He heats it up seven times, hotter than it has been. He binds those three men. Moving on to what makes it all a great story is they throw a man bound with their clothes on. And when they peer into that fire, there's a fourth man. And that fourth man is who it's all about. It's all about Jesus. And so through the deep water, through the fire, you see what God's able to do for his children. I want to look over here in the, the verse 11 in chapter 43 of Isaiah. I, even I, am the Lord. 
and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared and I have saved I, and I have shown when there was no strange God among you. Therefore, ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. I think a lot of people don't understand God. I think a lot of people are afraid of God. Afraid of God's people. Maybe God's people sometimes have been hard and have been crucial. And But we just want to love on you. You know, it gets me when people get low. Maybe when they're broken. When devastation has come. That's what they want to call on the preacher. Mm. Why don't they call on the preacher? What it is today. When he can give them a message of hope, of salvation, instead of having to come out to the hospital and be by some body that's been wrecked and tore up in some accident because of alcoholism and drugs, it, 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 it gets them. But There's a story, and all that was out of the Old Testament, and I want to look over in the New Testament. Just read a little bit of this shipwreck. <clears throat> I think Brother Falconry said something about Paul going to Rome last week. He had to go to Rome to be a witness, and he had to go to Rome to die. But start in verse 14. But not long after there arose against it a tempest, the wind caught. Anyway, it's a big word. <laughs> Strong wind cast it up a, a lot of waves. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive and running under a certain island, which is called Claudia, we had much work to come by the boat, which when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksand, struck sail, and so we were driven. We being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, and the next day, they lighten the ship. The third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. When neither sun nor stars in many days appeared and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. I wonder if folk are in that place. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from creed, and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the shield. And he said, Therefore stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am, and whom I serve. And he told them to fear not. But the point of that story is that they would have just listened to what Paul had to say. The shield wouldn't have been destroyed. All that loss. Now, the good thing is there was no loss of life. But they were still lost. But if they would just listen to Paul, there would have been no loss. And I believe if you just listen to the ministers, there'd be less loss and more life. I was thinking about... Uh, it's tornado season, right? We've seen some of that hit around down in the van. And, but I got to thinking about the uh, the sirens that go off. So I just want y'all to think a minute. If we were sitting right here, 
and we begin to hear the sirens go off. Our alertness would rise a little bit, and our alarm level would arise a little bit. Mm -hmm. Some people might begin to move, some people might begin to seek cover, but what if the tornado overrode those sirens and that sounding of a freight train was shaking and the tin was rattling and coming off the top of this building and rain was pouring in. Then the alarm level would rise to the point of crying out to God. Have you seen them? Have you seen the people that go through these tornadoes and that they, they talk to on the media mm. that survive? Mm -hmm. You know what they say? Mm -hmm. They were praying. They were crying out to God. Yeah. Yes. And God spared them. And, and to me, that's, that's it. That's how simple it is. That's how simple salvation is. Cry out. The alarm is sounding. Mm. And it's getting louder and louder. Because we don't know when the clouds are going to be built back mm -hmm. and the Lord Jesus appear. And then there won't be no chance. There won't be no opportunity. There won't be no exits. Why does it take a disaster? The answer is because people are prideful. They're full of pride. Amen. But I believe the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And I know that God is still on his throne and I know he's still working. And so I take heart in that. And in Hosea 8, 7, it says, For they have sown the wind, and what shall they drink? The world. Now you keep sowing to the wind, guess what you're going to get? A tornado. Now I, my friend, don't want no more tornadoes. I, I, don't, I, I don't want nothing to do with it. But I believe that, that this right here can be avoided. And a lot of it just can be avoided by crying out to God. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity. I pray for the men and women here, God, that you would do a work of grace in their heart. God, if they need to talk to someone that they've seeked out, one of your ministers, and God, if, if, if they can't do that, then most of all, they just seek out a quiet place and find you and talk to you, for you are big enough to deal with any situation that's in their life. And so I just ask you to have your way with the rest of this meeting, God. We tell you we love you and we praise you. And we thank you most of all, God, for the forgiveness of sin. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.